Lesson 2.7, solving problems involving more than one right triangle will be the last lesson of this uh, second unit on trigonometry. Uh, so far, you've probably found this unit to be fairly straightforward. It's probably one of the easiest ones that we'll actually do all year. Um, this last section pushes students a little bit more, though, uh, so you may experience some difficulty. So let's get started with this, and uh, maybe we'll try and challenge you a bit. We can use trigonometry. to solve problems that can be modeled using right triangles. When more than one right triangle is involved, we have to decide which triangle to start with. All right. So like a question like we have right here. It says calculate the length of xy to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Well, you need to look at what information you have and, and, uh, and where you're kind of looking. If you look, there's kind of there's two triangles. I'll call this one maybe one and two. You see that we have more information about triangle two, all right? And we're trying to work our way to find out what that side is. So what we're usually going to have to do is look for the side length or the angle or what have you that's shared by both triangles. Well, here I'm going to uh, maybe I'll do it in blue here. Notice that this side that I have in blue is shared by both of them. So if I can use the information in triangle two to help ourselves maybe get that side, and that's going to help me to get information in triangle one. And that's how these always work. Start with the triangle that you have the most amount of information and work to find out what you need. Okay. So in order to find this side right here, y, uh, w, uh, we're going to have to use some type of trigonometric principle. So if we have a reference angle right here. In relation to that reference angle, that would be my opposite side. 8.4 would be my hypotenuse, so I must use the sine ratio. So sine of 20 degrees is equal to y, w, all over 8.4. In order to get uh, our variable by itself, we just move the 8.4 up front. So we have 8.4. The sine of 20 degrees is equal to yw. All right. Checking this into our calculator, we get 8.4, the sine of 20 degrees, making sure that you're in degree mode still. We get roughly yw equal to 2.8 seven two nine seven dot 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 again I'm not rounding here the reason I'm not rounding is because um, you don't want to round to get to your last step you round too early then your final answer might be a little bit off okay so we have this highlighted side right here that's good now what we need to find out is what they're looking for so I made it kind of ugly here but we know this side okay we are looking of course we have a 90 degree angle right there we're looking for this side now in relation to this angle this would be my adjacent and the side that uh, I'm looking for would be the hypotenuse. Well, the ratio that combines those, of course, is cosine. The cosine of 22 degrees is equal to the adjacent, this time being our answer that we had, 2.87297, all divided by yx, or I guess I'll call it xy, that's what they called it in the question. Recall, in order to get xy by itself, we're going to swap these. So the answer is going to be xy divided by, sorry, xy is equal to 2.87297 all divided by the cosine of 22 degrees. Now the beauty of this, you'll see on your calculator, and I suggest you do this, is just leave it in right there. All I have to do is take that answer now and divide it by the cosine of 22 degrees, and I'm going to have a very, very accurate answer. So I have 3.0985. The question asked me to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, so I can say that xy is equal to 3.1. It's a relatively basic question dealing with two triangles, but that's how uh, most of these are going to work. Let's move forward. Example two. A surveyor stands at a window on the ninth floor. So he's right here. Maybe we'll draw him a little. There he is, living the dream. Uh, he uses a clinometer. You might recall us using a clinometer earlier uh, this unit uh, to measure the angle of elevation and depression of the top and uh, base of the taller building. The surveyor sketches this plan of his measurements. Uh, determine the height of the taller building to the nearest tenth of a meter. So we want to figure out what the height is of this entire, I guess it's kind of in a tan color over here, that entire height. Well, let's start out with some information that we know. We obviously know that the height of the tower from here to here is going to be 39 meters. Okay, They tell you that from looking at the fellow on the ninth floor. 
what we have to do is we have to figure out what this portion is. Maybe I'll call it x up here. Okay. So how are we going to work our way to figure out what x is? Well, once again, look for the side length that is shared by both triangles. Well, the side length that I want to focus on is this blue one again. Eh, I better not use blue there. Let's use green. Okay, it's going to be this green guy going right through the middle there. So in order to find that side length, we're going to have to use some trigonometry. Well, we'll use our reference angle. We'll use the side that we have right here, which is the opposite one. And we're looking for, of course, this side here, which I'll call the adjacent. Maybe I'll even use, uh, what should I use? I'll use, I've used x already, so I'll use y here. So the tangent of 42 degrees is equal to the opposite, 39 meters, over the adjacent, which we'll call y. In order to get y by itself, we swap those. 39 divided by the tangent of 42 degrees is equal to... Forty-three point three one three eight eight dot dot Remember, we want to use that entire answer in a second. Okay, so we have that side length now. If we want to get x, we're going to have to use the tan ratio once again. So now I'll do a tangent of thirty-one degrees is equal to my opposite side. That's x over my adjacent, which is y. But of course, we know what y is, and we can determine that x is equal to forty-three. 0.31388 dot dot dot. I'll put that in in full on my calculator times the tangent of 31 degrees. So again, here I can take that answer, just multiply it by the tangent of 31, and that should be my accurate answer for what x is. X is equal to 26.025. Uh, that should be enough decimal places. Okay. So that's what x is, but now you've got to answer the question in terms of the height of that entire building. Well, the height, if you will, is just going to be this 26.025 plus what that first building was, which was 39. All right? And in total we see, since I think they said to round to the nearest tenth of a meter, that your solution is 65. Okay. Not too bad. Um, this next one. Okay. Uh, this one is um, uh, it's a little bit tougher, and I'm going to do this one example kind of like I did one uh, earlier uh, in this unit where I'm going to get you guys try this one on your own. What I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you the final answer. If you don't get this one on your own, what I want you to do is come talk to me or one of your colleagues in class and, uh, and determine how to do this. All right? So this one's a little bit more difficult. Uh, the final answer that you should get they are looking for the distance of how far apart are the students to the nearest meter. Well, we have one student here, one student here. They're looking for this distance. Okay, is I'll just write maybe distance equals 32 meters. A quick little hint, if you want one to get started, is you'll notice that you have. I'll try and maybe I'll do this first one in. Let's do fluorescent green. We have one triangle right here. Notice how that makes a 90 degree angle. You're going to have to somehow use that triangle. There's another one I'll do over here in purple. You're going to have to somehow use that triangle. All right. Now that you have those two, somehow that's going to assist you with this bottom triangle right here Okay, to find that distance that we're looking for. So try that one on your own. We're looking for that answer. If you don't get that answer, then uh, come talk to me or one of your colleagues in class. Last one we have here, number four, is probably my favorite question of the entire unit, one that I would love to throw on a unit test with you guys. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, this one's going to look very similar to one that I got you to do in your homework, although what we're going to do is we're going to label uh, the side lengths a little bit different. So let's make this side EF equal to, I don't know, let's do eight meters. Let's do FG, we'll make it, um, I don't know, four meters. And let's do the BG side right here. Let's make it six meters. Okay. So if you can visualize a box, what I'm looking for, or um, a rectangular prism like we have right here, the one that I often use in class to show students is the uh, the tissue box. Um, I'm looking for the distance from the top corner all the way through the middle, kind of through to the uh, bottom opposite corner. Okay. So we're going to have to use our trigonometric information. One of the ratios is going to help us here. The question is, how? Well, let's start with this. If I draw this as a triangle, 
you guys can kind of visualize how this is. This would be like a cross section, like right through the middle. Well, with that triangle, I'm going to need um, to figure out what this bottom, this maybe I'll call it H for because it's the hypotenuse of this bottom side. Well, in order to find that H, I'm going to have to do some work. I know that the distance from A to H is 6 right there, but before I can get there, like I said, got to do some work. Now, if you look at this bottom portion, okay, so I'm going to draw a rectangle here. And I'll label this as H, G, E, and F. What I want to figure out is what this bottom part is. So now I'm looking at this um, rectangular prism as though you were looking uh, down at it from the top. All right, I want to figure out what H is. Well, we have enough information to figure that out, although we're just going to have to do a little bit of work. Okay. So what is the distance from H to E? Well, it's opposite of G to F, so we can say that it is 4 meters. And actually, maybe I'll do a different color now. 4 meters. And then from E to F is 8 meters. Okay, since we have a rectangular prism, we can assume that's a 90 degree angle. And we're off to the races here. We can use some Pythagoras. So 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to, I'll call it H squared, 16 plus 64 give me 80, and h is going to be equal to the square root of 80. Now I'm just going to leave it like that because like I've always been saying, don't round till you get to the last step. Now that I have that h, I know that this is root 80, I can use Pythagoras once again to get the distance from a to f. All right? And the distance from a to f, you could call it a f uh, for this one, let's just call it x. Okay, so I'm going to go 6 squared plus the square root of 80 all squared is equal to x squared. 6 squared is 36. The square root of 80 all squared. Whenever you have a radical that's squared, you just get whatever's underneath the radical there, then all you're going to get is 80. So that's kind of nice. So you can check it with your calculator if you don't believe me. Adding these together, we have 116 is equal to x squared, or x is equal to the square root of 116. And that would be a good final answer for me. Um, it's into the nearest tenth of a centimeter, though, so we should put it into our calculator. We'll take the square root of 116, and to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, we get 10.8. Actually, it said centimeter. I guess I should label these as centimeters. Small fix. Keep it at 10.8 centimeters, like so. Okay. Uh, lastly, it said, what is the angle, uh, what is the measure of angle AFH? So make sure we know what they're talking about. AFH. Whenever they use that notation, folks, AFH, they could have asked you, like, what is angle F? Well, angle F could be any one of these angles. There's like one, two, three, four different ones that I can see just right now. So in order to say that, um, in order to, I guess, uh, be specific about which one they're looking for, they're going to use this notation. So they go from A to F to H. So it's looking at this little angle right in here. So I'm going to draw this triangle kind of again down here. Okay, so if you recall, this is A, this is F, and this is H. We knew that this side up here was 6, I believe. Yep, 6 centimeters. We knew that uh, this one is approximately 10.8 centimeters. And we knew that the bottom one was the square root of 80 centimeters. They want to know what this angle is right here. Now, two of these answers are exact. Two of these side lengths are exact. The 6 and the root 80. You could use whatever ratio you want here, but you got to be careful. If you use the 10.8, that one's been rounded, right? It wasn't exactly, <coughs> excuse me, 10.8. Uh, so therefore, I would suggest you using the tangent ratio because it has the two highlighted numbers. So I will go the tangent of uh, AFH is equal to my adjacent, sorry, my opposite, 6, over my adjacent root, 80. Remember, whenever you're looking for an angle, we haven't done this in a bit, you're going to put in the tangent inverse, or whatever ratio you're dealing with that inverse. So AFH is equal to the tangent inverse of 6 divided by root 80. And a little bit of work here. have your solution. So that angle to the nearest uh, degree is approximately uh, 34 degrees. Alright, beautiful thing right there.